Our chairman of the English-speaking union of the United States, Dr. Paul Beresford Hill, if he'd like to join me. <clears throat> and we'll ask him to say a few words. And we'd also then, when he gives the signal, like all of the participants today, to quickly come on stage, if you will, to join us. And we'd like to give you a certificate uh, of appreciation and uh, to acknowledge, of course, your participation. Dr. Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, Lucia, thank you so much for words which resonate amongst all of us here today and which reflect so much the, the values, the ideals, and the aspirations both of the English-speaking Union and I think of those of us who love Shakespeare and his works so much. Thank you, students, for an absolutely spectacular day. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make uh, all of the performances, but I was told as I came in that those who witnessed <coughs> everybody felt that this was one of the strongest groups of students that we've had doing the Shakespeare competition uh, in the over 30 years that it has been a part of the English-speaking union. When you, uh, when you think about Shakespeare, he's so set in our culture and in our history and in our way of thinking that it would be very difficult to imagine a world without William Shakespeare, especially if you like and love the English language. The period of history when he lived was prolific in the writing of drama. Not only poetry, but drama. There were many people who were writing plays around that time. Shakespeare was one of a whole school of very, very prolific dramatists. I was talking to a researcher the other day who told me that of all the plays that were written during that period, 1580 to 1620, of all the plays that were written, we only know of one third. The other two thirds have been totally lost. When you imagine that, and the fact that some of those lost plays were written undoubtedly by William Shakespeare. We know at least three or four that are referenced in history for which we can find no trace. Imagine then what a gift it is that we have been able to inherit thanks to those clever men and women, I'm sure, behind them pushing <laughs> who were responsible for creating the first folio of Shakespeare's works. Many of those plays that were recorded in that first folio, of which only about 160 copies, I believe, still exist, uh, many of those plays were found in, I wouldn't hardly say garbage cans, but they were salvaged <coughs> from theatres, from shelves, from cupboards, from places all over London, and any researcher who is aware of that first folio will tell you that many of the plays that were written and published were published in such a way that they reflected the very, very haphazard way in which they were collected and put together. The fact that we have this canon of Shakespeare and the fact that his works are still noted and talked about today tells us something. And I think what it really does tell us something about is about ourselves. The first Shakespeare play I saw was at Stratford-on-Avon, and it was a performance of Julius Caesar. I never forget coming in, sitting at the back, and looking at the bare, <coughs> empty stage, and hearing loud, loud, loud trumpets, and a band 
playing a very, very militaristic march. And suddenly the theater was bathed, the stage bathed in light, and these huge, huge banners fell bearing swastikas. I couldn't believe my eyes. <coughs> swastikas. And there was Julius Caesar, a fascist dictator. Shakespeare, Ben Johnson said, is not only for now, but for all time. But Shakespeare's magic is the fact that he is amenable to interpretation. And that is what we saw here today. We saw tragedy. We saw comedy. We saw laughter. We saw tears. We felt the passion, the raw emotion of kings and emperors and lovers and the dispossessed we found and saw on this stage this afternoon pretty much everything that Shakespeare has to offer because you were able to interpret his words 400 years later so they came alive for each one of us. That is the gift <coughs> that Lucia Dumont tells you you must continue, and you must perpetuate, and you must carry through in your lives, and you must learn and continue to learn and pass on this great torch of human feeling, of human emotion, and of human passion. I've talked enough. I want to give out some certificates now. Everybody, please. <laughs> When you okay. hear your name, kind of come forward and receive your certificate. These certificates are in no particular order. So, uh, Actually, they're performance. Oh, they're in performance. Oh, no. So, number one. Amber Ross. She, uh, she shall receive her certificate. Okay. Leo Merrick. Reese Twitter. Good luck on that one. <laughs> just like just like spell. Chin Leo Mao Africa. <laughs> Kaya Torrance. Alexandra Chikil. They have flights. Flights. Oh dear. Oh. <coughs> Clara Living. Amy Clark. Patrick Bond. Ryan Smith. Lyric Mullen. Donna Boyd. <laughs> Celia Brown. <laughs> Rudfik Ashkar. <laughs> Marilyn Bria Moore. Dominique Marshall. <laughs> Ken Ryan. 
Caroline Downs. Kanan Bracey. Leanne Bell. Madeleine Van Riper. <laughs> Alana Stern. <laughs> Julia Hockey. <laughs> Michael Martin. Jessica Lima. <laughs> Stephen Rosario. <laughs> Brandon Burke. <laughs> Danielle Gonzalez. Hunter Abal Sadiq. <laughs> Rohan Padmakama. <clears throat> Nicholas Bowman. <laughs> Ogechi Agano. Roxanne Cowart. <laughs> Presley Kraut. <laughs> Samantha Sirani. <laughs> Rosie Finch Brown. Maya Issa. <laughs> Libby Kalmanson. <laughs> Elisa Lipke. <laughs> Lauren Ledger. Paige Peterson. <laughs> Cassie Duca. <laughs> Connor Jenkins. <laughs> Malenki Welsh. Hannah Lowe. <laughs> Judy Durkin. <laughs> Trevon Wainwright. <laughs> Andrew Spafford. Tara Davenport. <laughs> Anna Urbanski. <laughs> Kristen Kopenick. <laughs> Claire Janice.
think before we do that, I think the teachers and the coaches need to stand up. Oh, yes. Those people who are responsible for bringing these young people here, you deserve a round of applause.